The Central Artery Tunnel Project, also known as the Big Dig, reroutes the Interstate 93 Central Artery that cut through the center of Boston or the waterfront of Boston. It, it separated the north end from the downtown and downtown from the harbor. The idea here is to put this into a three and a half mile long tunnel underground. And it was really the engineering vision of Fred Salvucci, the Secretary of Transportation in the Dukakis administration, that allowed this to happen, plus his persistence, his ability to lobby to get federal funds for this, since Massachusetts, or since Boston, had put a moratorium on highway construction in the early 1970s, which did not win Massachusetts any real friends in those who like to build highways. So you have, though, this persistent effort, a very expensive effort. Initially, Salvucci thought it would cost about $2 billion, and when he approached Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill and Congressman Moakley with this proposal, and they asked how much would it cost, and he said about $2 billion, they said, that's a lot of money, which it was in the 1980s when he was proposing the idea. He combined the idea of depressing the central artery, putting it underground, with another idea of building another tunnel to connect Logan Airport with the downtown, actually extending the Massachusetts Turnpike, or Interstate 90, to Logan Airport, which would speed access to the airport. This is something that the business community very much wanted, a new tunnel to the airport, as it would take hours to get from the airport to downtown and vice versa, as there was only one vehicle tunnel under Boston Harbor. Salvucci made a stipulation with this entire proposal that putting in the new harbor tunnel and depressing the central artery had to be done without taking any private property, any private homes, because he remembered what had happened with the airport expansion in the 1960s and with the building of the central artery itself in the 1950s that displaced about 10,000 people. So ultimately, beginning in 1991, we have ground broken to begin this entire project, and it's completed by 2006, that is 15 years, which does seem like a long time, and if you lived through it, it probably seems like an even longer time. However, if you spent hours or days or years atop the central artery, which was pretty much like a 24-hour parking lot in the center of Boston, you wouldn't think it was that long of a time. Or, if you recall, that it took more than that, longer than that, to build the Bunker Hill Monument between the 1820s and the 1840s, you'll realize that this project actually ran pretty smoothly. Also, it does go much over budget. It's about $15 billion or so when it all is completed. In addition to the tunnel, which is named in honor of Ted Williams, number nine on the Boston Red Sox, the last player to hit over 400 during a season, that was the 1941 season, or it's a wonderful tunnel which does speed access to the airport, or the Leonard Zakem Bunker Hill Memorial Bridge over the Charles River, which becomes a great focal point for Boston. It is the widest cable stay suspension bridge in the world, and it is, as are many other pieces of the Central Artery Project, an engineering feat. I should point out that initially the Zakem Bridge was going to be a 12-story overpass that looks very much like every other overpass in the country, except it was much bigger, and it was going to have to connect Route 93 with the Tobin Bridge, which is Route 1, in this massive structure which would shadow much of the North End in Charlestown. There was intense community opposition to this. It was called Scheme Z because I suppose the designers had to go through 25 other schemes before they came up with the one that was most appropriately ugly and massive. Going back to the drawing board, they created this very elegant bridge, this cable stay bridge over the Charles River that connects the Central Artery Project with the Tobin Bridge and with Route 93 north of the city and becomes an elegant New Boston emblem 
named for Leonard Zakem, who was head of the Anti-Defamation League and died, sadly, just a few, as this project was underway, and also named for Bunker Hill. And the towers of the Zakem Bridge are meant to echo the Bunker Hill Monument, which you can see nearby. And then you also have the opening of parkland over what had been the ugly roadway, or where the ugly roadway once stood. So this project, an expensive project, which takes longer than expected, ultimately does make a better city, as the North End now is once again connected with downtown, and the harbor is once again a place to which we can turn our attention.